It's an earlier morning. What's the time? Half past eight. We are at Cybono, and I'm going to be program directing and facilitating panel discussions with the Department of Higher Education and uh, Multi Choices of Partner. There. There's a couple of other partners. It is Women's Month, so there's going to there are going to be discussions around women leadership. They're going to be leadership from the different universities, SRC members. So. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the conversation. I mean, the youth are our future. I kind of wasn't prepared yesterday because I got the call yesterday. But we're here, Tele did my face, and yeah, I'm feeling good. It's like the sun is out, but it's still a little bit chilly. So I hope once the conversations get started, we're nice and relaxed. the Deputy Executive Chair of the NYDA, uh, the Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, as well as the Acting Public Protector. And then we'll have a, a short break before resuming with our second panel. Uh, that we'll have uh, uh, Prof. Mozimi from uh, the University of Johannesburg, um, the Chair of the Portfolio Committee again, as well as the uh, representative from SAUS and the representative from SAVETA. Um, and that's to take us towards the end of the program, uh, where the Deputy Minister will make uh, the closing remarks. The, oh yes, the, the, the second panel will have the, the, the President of COSATU, who might arrive slightly late. Um, she has another <coughs> engagement. Yes. And then the, the panel discussions, although it will be more the panel, but the audience will also participate as we um, are looking forward to the student as well as sharing their experiences and asking questions as well. Um, I think in short, that's how we plan the day uh, to look like. And then after the DM's closing remarks, uh, we'll invite everyone to lunch, uh, and then that will bring us to the end of the day. How you all doing? Better you guys are our future. Yeah? No, you are our present. You are our present. So let's give it up for the gents because after today, I'm seeing change happening. Kilo, now you're going to be at the front. Ne? Yes, I love it. Love to see it. Love to see it. And it is very critical, I think, when we are addressing some of the issues this morning pertaining to what affects you as women leaders at your institutions. We do not hide from the challenges we face by your peers that are men. We do know there were many reports in various student protest action of women complaining around their safety and a whole lot of other issues. And I encourage the gentlemen that are here assisting with escorting the ladies from all over the country to come and participate, to not exclude yourselves from this conversation. You are a critical ingredient in things getting to where they need to be. So welcome ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. The program is officially open and I would like to welcome the other person I didn't formally acknowledge because she has her very own moment, Metumi Masekela, who is the head of corporate affairs at Multi-Choice South Africa, Multi-Choice being a partner in today's event. I'm truly honored to be here and to welcome you all to the Young Women Leaders Dialogue. And I'm particularly excited to sit in a room with such diverse 
inspiring group of young women. We all know that women and young females face many challenges. Challenges around access, whether it's careers, education, but also as women, we deal with many issues of inequalities and discrimination. These challenges can make it difficult for us, both young and senior women, to succeed in careers. But despite all of these challenges, women continue to shine, continue to reach great limits um, in their careers. Many of these women are sitting with us in this room today. You know, so someone, um, Chancellor, once said, um, the role of men and women, you know, let the men handle the big things, like should Trump run and things like that, and let the woman handle the small things, like what school is the child going to, you know, how much should we spend on groceries? And I think that conversation always makes me laugh because you were speaking about what seemingly might be the big things. They were important, but they were not as urgent as the issues that the gent was addressing. So I want to pick up on that note. And I'm very conscious of the time of your time advocate, and I will release you at exactly the time you asked. I will be abusing you until then. Advocate, there are so many important issues on the agenda of women in general. I want to now bring the focus to um, women leaders, but what are the issues that are urgent? Because, you know, we speak about equality, we speak about having agency, we speak about being heard, we speak about representation, transformation. What is urgent? Because the students that are sitting with us, I'm sure you've all been taught about doing the quadrants, right? Of important, not urgent, very important, very, uh, you understand that concept. There's some issues, and the reason that I want to start on this note is because I want to do the Deputy Minister's homework for him. That if we talk urgent, these are the ones that he needs to walk away with homework in mind. For me, what's really urgent, and I, I want to deal with the pertinent issue that affects us all in society, it sounds very um, is that everything is a creature of law, you know, and you then ask yourself, what is the rule of law in the aspect of women emancipation? Firstly, are we speaking of equality? Are we speaking of equity? For me, it's very urgent that uh, we make a clear determining factor that it is actually equity and not equality. But further that, um, Tom Bingham in his book, The Rule of Law, says, what is really the rule of law if the hands in which it is entrusted are not transformative? Again, it speaks to the issue of transformative leadership. You cannot entrust me to execute a task which um, material conditions I do not understand. Therefore, the, the future of women cannot still be in the hands of which a majority men. And then we expect that we are going to achieve equity. When we look at the numbers, varyingly, yes, we have nice strides, but are we there? We are almost 30 years into our, our democracy. The urgency was race, and we cannot run away that balancing the race benefited black men. Now the urgency is that we need to realize that a black man must appreciate that. And I, and I want to make a very pertinent example. I, I'm in a group of Black Lawyers Association and as the process was unfolding um, towards the shortlisting and the interviews of the public protector, one of the esteemed legal minds said, it's time now for a male public protector. He said, we've had two female private protectors, now we need a male. Now, the urgency is that it's not the numbers, but it is the, the 
content, the, the contextualization of why we are speaking of women emancipation. Now it tells you that even what we would call esteemed legal minds do not understand the broader perspective, but it's for us now to contextualize these numbers and say, what must this thing give us? But it's for those women in, in leadership positions to clearly understand the assignment. You know, can I come in? Yes, I, 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 I want to quickly comment and I'll hand over to Chancellor to come in. The example that you used, which drives me nuts, like my brain always thinks in clapbacks in this regard. Whenever black men feel it is time for a man, why do they never say, Wendy King, we've had so many black presidents, it's time for a white president. And the only time yes. that we can make it real, our experiences, is by resorting to a racist example where they are no longer the ones that are privileged, which automatically puts the black woman right at the bottom of the food chain, right? Where we are stuck trying to be allies with white women that have a certain privilege and trying to be allies with black men who also have a certain privilege. Where in essence, when we say we are on our own, that is what we mean. Conversations like that, where, you know, my strategy, and, and I'm happy to share this, whenever a man says something that sounds off kilter, play dumb and ask questions. What do you mean? Until they can answer no more, because they will answer themselves. So if a person says that we've had two, we now need a man, what do you mean? Because now they must explain and back that up. What do you mean? Um, Chancellor, you wanted to yeah, add I something. Didn't, I didn't want to get involved in uh, <laughs> this discussion of should it be a turn for a man or not. Yes. I think that's the point of view of an individual, mm. and I don't think that we really want to trivialize the issue of the position of public protector by going down that rabbit hole. But what a uh, question I wanted to raise that was triggered by the acting public protectors opening was you see equity as urgent rather than equality. And I wanted an elaboration on why. Because I think if you look at South African society and you look at the struggles we've engaged in over a period, and this comes from our past, uh, looking at the battles we're still fighting, I would argue equity, yes, and equality. Mm. I wouldn't separate the two. And I think the Constitution allows for, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights is absolutely clear on equality. But it's through the clauses that deals with affirmation allows for us to bring in equity. So let's not give up any space. Because as we see, once you have an element of complacency, you also, or, or you think you've got it, we've got the equality side. Rollback is a given, you know, just as if we want to talk about patriarchy being a given. Racism globally hasn't been resolved yet. So, so let's not give up one and save the other only. Let's actually look at the instruments that we have available, both in our constitution and with a commitment to the rule of law of saying we demand both. Thanks. Advocate, maybe you can add on how, how those two could live together in the context of what Chancellor is alluding to. I mean, you speak from a space of law, which while some might think is not relevant to them, law is relevant to each and every one of us. I hope each of you has a copy of the Constitution somewhere, whether you're interested in the law or not. You don't want to be interested where now we're trying to figure out what your rights actually are. The issue here is not to leave out the other, but is to accelerate the other, because equity has been left behind. So it is as we move forward and entrench equality, but we need to accelerate equity so that those two are on par. And as Chancellor correctly said, they go hand in hand. But as we are right now, equity has been at the 
that, and it's the less that we speak of, and we speak mostly um, of equality. She created the space. She said, first I want you to start in the first few sessions learning under this man who's done a million Disney Hollywood films, because we didn't have, have those roles prominent in our country. She created, she said, don't worry, I'm going to cushion you. I'm going to create development for you. After each session, she'd say, how are you feeling? Then she allowed me to start running sessions by myself, at which point I actually realized, after following in the footsteps of this phenomenal man, there are certain things that he cannot do that I can because they are our stories. He's a white American man that can't understand when do you use the word ish? Now when I'm directing Mum Lillian Dubé, I started sitting in sessions and the actor started saying, wait, I need to hear what Rilem Khile thinks. And then she said, you are ready to be on your own. Now I have an international voice director credit. I was not qualified, I had no cap capabilities, but a woman created the space and she created the two things we both. So, can it be done? Again, we cannot put a woman in a position and then leave her to fail. Yes. It requires everybody in the system. So the person made sure to say, you are training this woman. She's going to be succeeding you. That is the intention. This is our succession plan. And we will judge your work on how great she is. So I'm phenomenal because now he's personally invested. So yes, we will hire the woman because they're women. Today say the sky is blue and someone else thinks it's green um, and I haven't really understood why that person thinks it's green. I then automatically feel that person is attacking me. That's not a mark of leadership. A leader must be able to navigate differences as well and must be ready to receive criticism and, and, and to, to actually process criticism. Because if we can go assume that women's support means that all women must support women and that's how things will succeed, it's wrong. Yes, we support women, but we must also be constructively self-critical. So I'm all done with facilitating program directing. I've handed over to Loisy. The conversations were actually so fruitful and exciting. There's this part of me which like, I still have FOMO about not having gone to varsity and to be a part of these kind of spaces, these type of conversations. Um, I was a prefect in school, I was an SRC member in school. I don't know if I would have done those things in varsity and it gets me wondering. But of course the key issue being, you know, the issues affecting young women leaders. And I hope that as the second panel continues, I'm going to be listening in the car, that we walk out with some key deliverables, that we hand over an action plan and deadlines to the Deputy Minister to say, here you go, go and do your job. So let's see how it all goes.